It's absolutely the case that today most people are not hosting their content either on their own website. There's a few small providers, but generally you're going to the big platforms, YouTube and Blip and Vimeo, um, for a couple of reasons. One of which is you don't have to worry about resources, and it also sort of guarantees that there's going to be a wider readership. One of the uh, quandaries is that while getting human rights footage out in the world is extremely important, there may be some forms of footage that can either harm the uploader or the people being presented in the video, especially since they didn't necessarily give consent. And the issues surrounding it are very complex, um, and so finding solutions for them are n neither straightforward or easy. But one of the benefits of possibly going through a platform is the potential of having something like a drop-down menu or some sort of prompt that asks the uploader, once they identify the video as a human rights video, can ask the uploader, are you sure that it's safe for you or the people represented in the video to upload this now? It's already been documented with human rights footage that it can lead to what's called compassion fatigue. And so in that sense, absolutely, that certain forms of footage can desensitize or there can be so much that you're overwhelmed and you're not sure what to do or where to put your energies. And I actually think we're in a moment like that right now. I do think it's a moment of extreme political vibrancy when people say this is a moment of political apathy. I disagree 100%. The number of groups and initiatives related to any field of politics, environmental politics, educational, health reform, race, you know, you name it, there's not groups, there's dozens upon dozens of groups, and they're all producing important forms of media and actions and so on and so forth. But in fact, it's created a landscape of a lot of fragmentation in a situation where groups are in competition with each other. So I actually think the next most important stage is how to build federation or alliances between existing groups to overcome some of the limits of having many, many, many pawns that sometimes work together, but sometimes do not. So how do you get the pawns to work together? And, um, and I think that's totally possible as well. Um, especially if there's groups whose sole focus is to kind of do the stitching work between different entities and groups. In the absence, I would say, of larger social movements, it has limited value. And so the question becomes balancing between looking at these and treating these videos as a positive agent of social change, though always responsibly, but only in the context of larger, kind of more traditional forms of political activism. And oftentimes that other side is left out of the equation a little bit. So that's how I'd say it really has its impact or could have its impact in a sense.